Hey, welcome everybody to Combat Saturday. I'm your host, DM Galabond. Today is Saturday, the 16th of May, 2020, and we are looking at Splint Mail today. So let's go ahead and get on with the show. All right, Splint Mail uh, is a type of heavy armor in 5th edition. It weighs 60 pounds, and it's made up of narrow strips of metal riveted to a backing of leather worn over cloth. Um, costs, it'll set you back 200 gold, gives you an armor class 17. It requires a strength of 15 to use it, and it gives you disadvantage on stealth checks. Now, um, the... Interesting thing about looking at uh, armor through the ages or through the editions of D&D is just to see how things have changed. And this one is a pretty interesting uh, one. So if we go all the way back to its origins, Splint Mail first showed up in first edition. And if you looked in the first edition uh, player's handbook, uh, you would see that Splint Mail uh, cost 80 gold pieces. And uh, the way that tables were built up, well, were built in here, you couldn't find all the information you needed in one table. You had to go around to different tables. And in first edition, you didn't have to go to two different books. So uh, Splint Mail costs 80 gold. And then in terms of its armor class, because as you remember, in, like we've talked about with other armors before uh, on this segment, the in 1st edition and 2nd edition, armor class went backwards. So the lower the number, the better the armor class. So if you have splint mail only, um, then you have an armor class rating of 4. But if you have Splint Mail and a Shield, you have an armor class of three. And uh, so, you know, once again, like in 5th edition, you have an armor class of 17. That's pretty good with Splint Mail. Here with Splint Mail, it's uh, also pretty good. But then if you want to find out other information about this type of armor, that's all you can find in a player's handbook. So you actually had to go to the AD&D um, Dungeon Master's Guide in order to find a description of Splint Mail. And uh, just as in 5th edition, it consists of light... Well, actually, it's a di little bit different. Um, the Splint Mail in 5th edition says it's vertical strips of metal put onto leather. Here it's a uh, light chain greaves and a leather coat into which are laminated vertical pieces of plate with shoulder guards. So it's similar but not exactly uh, the same kind of construction. Alright, so then if you go on to second edition, most things in um, first edition AD&D and second edition D&D, they uh, kind of lined up. And uh, Splint Mail, again, was 80 gold pieces and weighed 40 pounds. Uh, and then, uh, you know, it still had the armor class of 4 and whatnot, and an armor class of 3 if you use Splint with a uh, shield. And then an interesting fact in 2nd uh, edition is... They say, well, the existence of this armor has been questioned. Uh, it's claimed that the armor is made of narrow vertical strips riveted to a backing of leather and cloth padding. Since this is not flexible, the joints are protected by chain mail. And what they meant by this is that in second edition, they tried to bridge between the, you know, historic reality of things that are historically real, like armor and weapons, and the fantasy world of D&D. &D. And so what they're saying is like, you know, if you talk to historians, they kind of would, would question whether anybody in medieval Europe or feudal 
Japan or uh, medieval China was bumping around in something like Splint Mail. Uh, but it, you know, it makes a good fantasy armor. So, you know, everybody, everybody run with it in D&D. And it's fine. I, I just think that's kind of an interesting thing that in second edition they they had a concern about that. Um, all right, now in third edition, 3.5, they finally came to giving us unified information. Uh, I like this uh, table uh, that they have set up. You know, so what is the classification? It's heavy armor. Uh, split mail. All right, now here we come to the 200 gold piece, um, 200 gold piece cost, which brings it in line with fifth edition. Uh, armor and shield bonus, it's plus six. Max dex bonus is plus zero. Armor check penalty minus seven. So that's for any any kind of athletics, acrobatics, stealth, anything that uh requires you to factor in a penalty for your armor you put a minus seven if you're wearing uh, splint armor and then if you're an arcane caster trying to wear splint mail uh, you have a 40 percent chance to uh, botch your spells um, so when you try to cast a spell, you have to roll percentile dice to see if you actually get the spell off uh, or if or if you fail it. Uh, speed is, if your speed normally is 30 feet, then while you're wearing this armor, it's 20. If your speed is normally 20, your, your speed in this armor is 15, and it weighs 45 pounds. Right, and then... Uh, there was a there's an image in the 3.5 players manual of the splint mail so you get a nice kind of visual of what this is supposed to look like here and then uh, you know we're back to almost the same description as fifth edition Armor is made of narrow vertical strips of metal riveted to a backing of leather, worn over cloth padding. Flexible chain mail protects the joints. The suit includes gauntlets, so protection for your um, hands. And uh, then split mail did not appear in 4th edition. So that's kind of a look at uh, split mail throughout the different editions of D&D. And somebody might ask well why would you care what the different editions are like well one of the things i like to do with these uh daily posts is talk about how things have changed through the editions it gives you a little bit more of an idea as a dm if you want to homebrew something if you if you like almost the way something is in fifth edition if you kind of know its antecedents and what came before it in previous editions you can have maybe a little bit more of a customized uh, <coughs> customized version of the item or uh, you know whatever it is that we're looking at and if you uh, see here in the third edition you have these images of the different armor types which you don't see in some of the other uh, editions then you can kind of uh, get a visual to help you better describe uh, armor to uh, your, your players and likewise uh, for players if you want to do something to knowing the history of an item or a spell or a monster or whatever throughout D D, it gives you a little bit more ideas you can go and pitch to your dm and say hey you know i was thinking about this and in previous editions you know it was described more this way can you know can we kind of homebrew it a little bit in terms of description or cosmetically homebrew it so that it you know looks and feels a little bit more like uh, this item from an earlier edition if you like the way that uh, that is described in another resource 
So that's one of the things that uh, I'm hoping that I can do for folks with uh, these, with these little, um, you know, with these little daily posts. All right. If you like what we are doing here on this channel, I would love it if you could go down and click the subscribe button and uh, that will, uh, you know, and if you ring the bell, that'll let you know every time we post something to the channel. If you have any thoughts on splint mail or a different type of armor or weapon or anything that you'd like to have us do on this segment for con combat Saturday, uh, please leave it in the comments. Uh, if you have any thoughts about uh, Splint Mail in terms of a favorite character you had that used it or uh, some story involving it that happened in the game, well, let us know that in the comments too. All right, well, take care, everyone. Uh, hope you have a wonderful, uh, wonderful evening, and we will see you back here next time. All right. Good night, everybody.